Wow, this game looks so good. This is going to be the best game ever. And that's why I'll never believe in anything ever again. Hello there beautiful human, my name is Ryder CX and welcome to my channel where today we're going to be talking about a game that I've been kind of having my eye on for the longest time but I just didn't really know how to approach the topic until it just became undeniable as to how this topic was going to go and we're going to be talking about Balan Wonderworld. You know that game that was the long awaited return of fame creator the Sonic the Hedgehog Yuji Naka and Naoto Oshima? By the way for the longest time I thought it was Naruto Oshima. Wouldn't that be such a cool name? Anyway, when this game first got announced back in July 2020, it looked really promising. It reminded me immediately of like a spiritual successor to Knights, of course having a lot of those classic Sonic aesthetics as well, especially from the adventure era. So it just looked like a game that I just really wanted to be great. The gameplay itself showed off a lot of play platformer elements specifically, looking kind of like a Mario Odyssey impersonator with all the different outfits which basically just look like a different variation of hats from that game, but I wasn't too mad about it because it was a pretty great gimmick within Mario Odyssey and definitely had a lot of room to stretch in another title and so why not let the team behind Sonic the Hedgehog take that on and make something that's just as brilliant. But then months later, the demo came out and it all went downhill from there. There was so many bad reviews and reception and comments about this demo and it just seemed like ugh. I don't know why I'm not shocked, you know, it just kind of seems like a been there done that kind of situation, you know, being a Sonic fan for all this time, but you know, it's um, disappointing nonetheless, you know, the gameplay was criticized for being boring, buggy, unpolished, and just like a lot of the things that I've come to hear oftentimes from Sonic games during the era when I was a kid. And so there was was a day one patch that was set to fix many of these issues, however there were no review copies given out in advance, and I can't help but think that this was a bad sign, you know? I could see the tornado coming from miles away. But what did critics ultimately think of this game? Well, if you take a look at some of these Metacritic scores, it's pretty clear that this game was panned, with the highest Metacritic score being a 57 at the time of this video, and from there on out, it's just downhill. And so, what I want this video to go over is some of the common criticisms that these reviews went over, and whether or not these scores are justified. Like, is the game actually this bad? You know, because if you look at these scores, it looks like it's even worse than games like Sonic 06 and Sonic Broom Rise of Lyric, like these are lower scores than those games. And so it's like, does this game deserve that? Or is this game just being hated on because it's what's popular and trending right now? You know, because that's definitely something that's really, really a thing with this game. I mean, there's just so much bad press surrounding this game beyond its critic scores. Like for example, did you all see those news stories about the fact that this game might've caused seizures within its final boss? Like this game just couldn't catch a break. <laughs> but nonetheless, I did take a look at some of the reviews views of this game and saw some of the criticisms and I also played this game for a few hours and so I feel like I'm inclined enough to comment on these criticisms and kind of detail whether or not it, the game really deserved these and so let's take a look at some reviews. First one I'm going to pull is from Classic IGN and they gave this game a 4 out of 10. Kind of what I was expecting to be honest from most publishers. Here's what they said about the overall quality of the game. When you're hopping around Balan Wonderworld simultaneously imaginative yet bland stages, it doesn't necessarily feel like a total train wreck. Some of its bare bones obstacle courses can occasionally produce hints of what I might call fun and it's not much more than a total bore the rest of the game. But when you take Balan Wonderworld as a whole, it sinks lower than the rudimentary platforming that barely props it up. From its misguided one button control scheme to its haphazard transforming costume mechanic and the levels that use them to the half-hearted child garden like hub world between them it gets a lot wrong and very little of what it gets right helps to balance the scales so there's a lot to unpack from that statement but one thing I can totally connect to with this review is the fact that they said it doesn't feel like a total train wreck it's true this game is pretty functional in my opinion you know but looking at these scores you would think that the game was actually broken and a glitchy mess and while there are some buggy things about this game it's certainly Apparently is far from what you saw in the likes of Sonic 06 for instance, you know? It's not a broken game, it's perfectly packaged together at least. And there's some other criticisms here that I sort of agree with, but another thing that IGN really 
criticized was the story of this game, or the lack thereof, and so here's what they said. This is usually the part where I'd break down Valen Wonderworld's story for you, but there's not much to tell about the unexplained nonsense it calls a plot. You play as either a boy who goes from happily breakdancing to being super bummed out in record time, or a girl whose housemates whispered about her behind her back for no apparent reason. Your choice means very little though, because either way you are quickly abducted by a magical top pat man named Balan and dropped into a dreamland full of weird birds and crystals or something. It's unclear, but that's all the setup you'll get before it starts parading you through 12 different worlds, each with just two levels, a boss and an extra level once you beat the story, they are each structured around another sad person, all of whom seem completely unrelated to anything that's going on. I myself have pretty mixed thoughts about the story based on what I've seen so far. While I do kind of see where they're coming from, especially being a fan of Knights in particular and how this is kind of going for a similar theme, I can't help but think that because of the vagueness or the very left to interpretation approach that they use with this story, that I think a lot of people are just going to walk away with the wrong idea and that's exactly what I see IGN doing over here. However, there is a review and I'm going to highlight later on that actually has a counterpoint to this opinion and so I'll be sure to discuss this a little bit more when we get there. But there's one thing about IGN's review that I absolutely agree with and think is one of the most mind-numbingly bad decisions with this game and that is the one button control scheme that they went with and so here's what IGN said. Regardless of its story, the festering rot at the heart of Balan Wonderworld is the inexplicable decision to make it a one button game. Apart from using the joystick to move and the short buttons to swap between ability altering costumes, nearly every other button on the controller does the same thing. That concept is taken laughably too far by making them the same in the menus too, forcing you to scroll to specific back buttons rather than just being able to hit the B slash circle, which would be hilarious if it weren't so stupid. I totally agree with this. I think this is one of the dumbest decisions this game went with, you know? I think this game really tried its hardest to be the simple experience that anyone can jump into, but by making it simple, it ended up being so simple that it actually detracts from the game experience itself and makes it less fun because instead of having these abilities at your disposal and being able to kind of chain together different abilities to make the game more interesting, you're forced to just use one ability at a time instead depending on what costume you have and it just makes the game so much more boring boring than it could have been, you know? The thing about platformers is that you're able to have multiple moves and able to use them together to kind of get to different areas and find different secrets, but this way it just completely limits what you can do at a certain time and it's just completely annoying, especially because you might not always have the costume that you need at the time that you need it and so, I don't know, it's just so limiting and the game really just like defeats itself with this control scheme and <laughs> I don't know, it's just really funny that it's seeped into the menus too. I I mean, gosh, how like stubborn were they about making this game as archaic as possible? Like, it's just, it doesn't make sense to me. So IGN were pretty hard on this game, but I found another review that actually was very positive about this game. And so this review comes from Q3, which gave this game an 8 out of 10. So aside from actually praising the gameplay and calling it fun, which I can kind of see to be honest, one thing I really want to highlight with this review is its emphasis on the story and the presentation of this game, which I for the most part agree with it and so here's what they said each of the two levels in any chapter are a real feast for the eyes there's so much to look at all being connected to the chapter's theme one chapter has a multitude of coral bodies of water to traverse shells and sand while another has giant leaves and spider webs to climb upon that initial overview showing what's ahead is breathtaking providing excitement of what is there to explore each chapter ends with a musical number upon defeating the boss using the same catchy theme song that sticks in the mind and will be hummed long after the scene ends both the song lyrics and the language used in Balan is entirely made up. A major theme throughout the game is that words are not needed to understand a person's suffering and joy. That is why spoken language isn't English or Japanese, or real at all. There are subtitles when characters speak, but that's only for Emma, Leo, and the Balan clown. Everyone else is intelligible. This allows player interpretation of the story, making them draw on the emotions each scene evokes. There are moments, especially when the game is starting, when either a few more scenes or narration in English would help explain more of what was going on, as it can be confusing to know what to do, what the Tims are, and what they need as their world is rebuilt. Overall, the act of not voicing what the problems to each character were makes sense and the images alone do convey why people lose their way. The non voice sections where the chapter's focus is explained could do with being a fraction slower in how quickly they are shown. Sometimes it feels a single blink can cause missing parts of it, but they are captivating and really help immerse Emma or Leo into that particular world. I found this viewpoint so interesting since that's why I really want to include it here because I do think that they're right to an extent. I think that they 
really relied on people interpreting the scenes in their own way and taking away their own messages. I think something though that I want to emphasize more in the criticisms that they cited is that it just goes by too fast and it's hard to really let anything about the story really sink in and so I think what Q3 was describing here was what Yuji Naka and team wanted people to get out of the story and I certainly think they could have done it. I just think that they needed a little bit more of a narrative push to make that happen because let's be honest this generation is just becoming more and more short-sighted like it's really hard for us to pay attention and really like get things you know I think it's just the result of the increased amount of social media use the amount of technology how everything is just like flying into your head at the same time you know it's really hard to get people to really jump into a game like this right away and so this is definitely not a method that was made to try to attract tons of people besides a lot of the other ideas in this game that made it seem like it was trying to be as simplistic as possible but i really think that if the story just had a bit more of a narrative push it could have really brought this game together and made it just as impactful as the original knights was i think this is a game that worked better back then when there was so much interpretation that had to be done because the technology just wasn't there. I mean, when the games were made back then, you know, you couldn't have full blown cutscenes, you couldn't have full blown narratives in there. You had to rely on the player's imagination to convey all that. But now times have changed, and I just don't think this method is as highly received anymore, which is a shame because I do kind of see the benefits of it, but I do think the story could have used a little bit more of a, well, story i guess but the musical numbers are so charming though and i know there's a lot of people that aren't a fan of the musical aspects of this game but man it just gives that game its own characteristics and i really think it works for the game you know it's okay if it's not your thing i know not everyone's into musicals and such but i really do love the dance sequences i do love the choreography it's just it's charming it's a little bit silly and cringy but it's charming and i really like it I found another review from Screen Rant which gave this game a 40 out of 100 as well and they talk about some criticisms that I do have to say really speak volumes on why this game is being received so poorly. But there's also an aspect to this review that I really want to bring up that I think kind of brings to perspective as to why this game is being so harshly reviewed in comparison to other games that might be similar in quality but aren't getting as harsh of reviews because I do think that people are really bashing this game more than they would for a typical game but there's a huge reason for that. So here's what they said about the game overall first. There's a lot of content in Balan Wonderworld but the amount of backtracking and costume swapping makes returning to previous levels feel too demanding. Pairing Balan Wonderworld's small environments with its lackluster 3D platforming fails to provide the triple A entertainment players come to expect from similar modern titles. The main issue of the game isn't its outdated take on an already niche genre but that its core gameplay isn't fun and its supporting elements aren't amusing. This is so true that backtracking this game is absolutely terrible and he has a reason for it so there's a lot of these trophies that you need to collect to progress through the game think of it as like this game's version of the stars in mario games if you don't have enough of these trophies you can't advance to the next level and so as a result you really need to scour these levels to find these the problem lies in the fact that a lot of these trophies require specific costumes to get them but to get that costume, you need to go into another level where that costume is at so you can collect it and then get out of that level and return to the level where you want to get the trophy with that costume. That way you can get the trophy. And so this in turn leads to a lot of backtracking going back and forth. And it's also kind of a chore because it's like, well, you have this trophy all the way out here and you have like 80 costumes eventually. Like what costume do you need to use to get this trophy? Now, obviously it's not going to be as complicated as like, oh, any of these costumes could be used to get the trophy but only one actually works now you'll kind of have an idea as to what costume might work in this situation but still it makes it unnecessarily complicated and I actually feel like finding trophies in this game is much more of a chore compared to what other platformers are and that's a bad thing because this is supposed to be one of the funnest things about the game it's supposed to be the funnest thing about platformers is collecting things and exploring the world but because of this game's control schemes and such exploring the world just isn't that fun and man no one likes backtracking like backtracking is just something that no one likes at this point. And so I've talked about a lot of different criticisms for this game, but I have tried to defend it as much as I can.
again. I will say that ultimately, I don't think this game is so bad that it deserves all the scores that it's getting, you know? I don't think it deserves like a 20 out of 10, for instance. I don't think it deserves all these really low Metacritic scores that make it seem like it's one of the worst games in the world. However, there is one thing this game had going for it that could have propelled it to immediate heights, but ultimately was its downfall. And so here's what Screen Rant said that really puts this together. Expectations for Bound Wonder World were fairly high after it was revealed that Yuji Naka would be directing the project. Naka is known for his work as the former head of the Sonic team, and as the lead developer of Nights into Dreams, Billy Hatcher and the Giant Egg, and Fantasy Star Online. These hit titles from the 90s and early 2000s raised the hopes of nostalgic gamers that Bound and Wonder World would be a successor to the adventure platformers from their childhood. And there you go. Really high expectations were placed on this game from the start. People were excited about this, including a lot of Sonic fans, because Yuji Naka. I mean, this guy's a legend. I mean, I know that he's had some missteps here and there, but he's ultimately the one that brought Sonic the Hedgehog to our hearts. And that's something a bit of a notoriety that you'll never get rid of. And so people thought that like, man, here you have a seasoned veteran making this brand new adventure that harkens a lot on what made platformers great, you know? You can't help but get excited about it. And I certainly was one of those people that was excited about it. But unfortunately, those really high expectations mean that this game is held to another level because it's not like it's some brand new team trying to whip together their first platformer. No, this is a guy that's been doing this for a long time that has experience in making both good and bad platformers. And so I really expect the better of Yuji Naka, you know? And that's why a lot of these choices just seem so mind-numbingly like stubborn and just stupid to me because these are a lot of things I'm like, he should know better, you know? He should have played this game and realized that, hmm, maybe I shouldn't make all the buttons do the same thing. Hmm, maybe I should make the movement a little bit more interesting. I feel like there were a lot of things with this game that like, it could have been so much better if just different decisions were made within like the development cycle. But ultimately, I don't know. I'm not sure what was going on in the minds of these developers, but maybe they had some like really strict ideas of what they want this game to be and it just did not coincide with what the public actually wanted. And so, I don't know, man. It's just, Bound Wonder World was a game that I really, really wanted to like, you know? But ultimately, it's just something that it doesn't provide what's trying to advertise basically and it reminds me of a similar situation with ukulele for instance which was touted as being like the banjo kazooie successor that ultimately let down a lot of people obviously this is a much harsher example of that but still kind of the same idea you know it's like you have all these built-up expectations but ultimately they're let down and that's why this game comes off as being a lot more terrible than i think it personally is i think this game is more of a 6 out of 10 to be honest because it is still functional and it still has some of its redeeming qualities here and there. I certainly don't think it deserves scores like 4 out of 10, 3 out of 10, etc. But you know, those expectations really set this game up for failure and that's why people see this game as so much worse than I think it actually is. And to be honest, even if the game did get 6 out of 10s and such, it's still not a great game and it's still something I sort of regret buying to be honest. But eh, you know, you live and learn. And so, those are my overall thoughts on Bound Wonder World. You let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Ultimately, I do think it's a game that had a lot of potential, but it's just too boring and redundant to really be any kind of fun. And yeah, I don't think I'm gonna be going back to it personally. But I will say the visual styles, the music, the presentation, that's all top notch. And it's a shame that all the budget went to that. <laughs> but yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Did you try Bound Wonder World? What are your thoughts about it? Do you agree with the reviews? Do you disagree let me know why or why not and so yeah this is an interesting video to make if you like videos like this and you want me to do more for future games coming out then let me know in the comment section below and what games you want me to keep an eye out for to make these videos for but all right that's pretty much everything this is writers riding out Thank you so much for watching this video. Special shout out to The Nerd Corner, Killer Lemurs, Team Ride with Sign Gamers, Johnny Hinton Ortiz, Time Bender, Jeremy Games, Amarillo66, Trash Q, Abraham Muner, and Mass Muner. These are my Patreon slash YouTube members. If you'd like to become a Patreon or YouTube member, get access to a whole bunch of different perks, then please check out the links in the description box below. But alright, this is Riders, riding out.